Hey, how you going? Welcome to the channel. Uh, this is part two of the yard tour. Uh, so I'm going to start this by the last bit of video that you saw on part one will be the same bit of video that you see of part two. Just so it's sort of from a timeline kind of thing, it sort of makes sense. Um, I've kind of done this as a, tried to do it as kind of a loop around the yard. Uh, yeah, so anyway, hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. Not going to get too involved here, but uh, that's the oh, that's the original seat out of the uh, Isuzu, and I have a heap of uh, turbos and well, not turbos, but intercoolers and piping and stuff uh, to go in this car. If I decide to put the original engine back in, um, the original engine out of these, you can bomb them up little gauge rack that I made many many moons ago the original engine you can bomb them up to put out pretty similar horsepower to these V8s so cheaper rego original engine much better idea I have over the back there two Alpine amplifiers one for the sp door speakers and one runs the sub um, which yeah, if I decide to keep the Susie I will transfer all of this stuff over to that Oh, and what a surprise. We have more lawnmowers. These are all just parts. These ones, completely dead. And there's one more <coughs> lurking in the bushes over here. Again, completely dead. Here we have another boat. Um, <coughs> and there's also a trailer in there, which is full of more diesel engines. Let me uh, put on my safari suit and see if I can forge my way in there. Bloody hell. All right. All right, so here we are. Okay, so a few stories here. Over the back there is the original what do they call them? Chev in Hey, hang on. Uh, hang on, I'll get on to that in a sec. So that's the original 5.7 litre Chev engine that they used to make. Um, diesel, sorry. Um, so that is just a petrol engine that Mr. Chevrolet converted to a diesel. They were a horrible, horrible engine. They had to derate them so much to keep them reliable that they just weren't worth it. Um, that one works, nothing wrong with it, runs just fine. Um, but yeah, they're not a reliable engine, so not sure what I'm going to do with that. Probably scrap steel. Um, and <laughs> my surprise, there's another Kubota, Marinized Kubota engine. I thought I had another one, I just couldn't remember, but there it is. Anyway, um, <clears throat> this is the original engine out of the Troll, the TD42. Um, this engine was still good, but the harmonic balancer came loose and did some damage to the crank. Um, I think it's fixable. So I have bought the parts and I'm kind of toying with the idea of fixing it back up, putting it back in the car, um, probably strip this engine down, rebuild it so it's a nice fresh engine, um, put it back in the car and just bomb the bejesus out of it. Get a huge turbo, that intercooler I've got in the uh, in the car, and put this on. I've been told you can get, um, <clears throat> you can pump these things up to about 250 horsepower whilst maintaining a good level of reliability. Um, so yeah, to bring it back to six cylinder rego with the same, if not more horsepower, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, that's certainly an option. Uh, this wonderful, thing here this is a Hino EC100 so this is a five litre engine um, <clears throat> this is the same cylinder block as the EH700 that is currently in the boat so this was the first decent sized engine that I put into it um, and this struggled but with a completely empty boat this would get it up onto a plane but only just it was still way too small um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, it's sitting here. This is a fresh rebuild engine. It's probably done about 20 hours and 
found it to be not powerful enough, so parked it up, took it out, swapped it out with the, uh, the bigger engine, and turboed the bigger engine as well. Uh, this guy here is a Peugeot, which uh, I have no idea why I'm hanging on to this. Um, it's an electronic fuel system, which the computer on these Peugeots is just horrible, and it's fried, the computer's gone. Um, this is just spare parts. I have robbed bits and pieces off it, and will continue to do so. So looking through the shrubbery is the back of that red boat that we just saw with the Mercury four strokes, 75 horsepower uh, and the stainless steel prop that's getting slowly buried into the dirt. Um, <coughs> that engine's making oil, uh, sorry, making water in the oil. So uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a pinhole in the block or what the go is. Um, but yeah, it does work, um, well it did work, it's been parked for a while, I probably need a, a fairly good going over by now. Um, last time I used that boat, uh, I could not take it up to full speed. I got as far as 65 kilometres an hour, according to my uh, GPS, and she started to get the death wobbles. I wasn't flat out, but I was close to it, so it would probably do 70k an hour max. Um, I'll have to work out what that is in knots and maybe I'll write that on the screen at the bottom there. But yeah, 65k an hour was pretty darn quick, I can tell you. So yeah, that's the front of that boat. It's actually not a bad boat, the only issue, uh, it's separating there. The uh, superstructure is coming off the hull. Fixable, but not a priority. So right down the back, we're getting near the back fence now. I've got a little storage shed here. Let's go have a look, see what we got inside. So this first one is just, oh, what do we have here? So uh, I think that's a, uh, what is it, Lugger is the brand on it. But I think it's a Kawasaki or something, uh, three cylinder diesel. Um, <coughs> and I think in there is a, Yanmar single cylinder with a thrown big end bearing. Um, and then just a little collection of electric motors and what some old compressors and a marine gearbox down the back there and a heap of spare tires for the motorbike. And a drill press that I don't use. Should also point out, here's two heat exchangers for Cummins. These actually came off a 6BT Cummins Marine. Well, obviously Marine. Um, so these are earmarked to go on to the Cummins that I have to go in the uh, in that big boat. Coming into the next little shed, um, I think that black drum is methanol, and I'm not sure what's in that other one. It'll be Peasel or something like a petrol diesel mix. Um, I'm not even sure if there's anything in it. It might be empty. A <coughs> um, couple of spare duo props. Uh, prop shaft for a tractor, sand blasting unit, the 290 duo prop leg that will be going on Mark Hoodler shortly. Uh, and this was a little experiment I did some time ago of getting a, it's a Kubota diesel engine and I turned it on its side, redid the um, drains for the sump, made my own external sump and mounted it onto an outboard leg just as a concept to see if this would work. And it does work, um, but this leg is just, it's knackered. I need to uh, reassess this and put a different, uh, remount this engine onto a different leg. Next container over is just spare parts of junk. Um, you can probably just make out there's a quad bike underneath all that. A Honda TRX 250, um, which works fine. It's just, I don't go camping that much these days, so don't get to use it. The next and last mess, I mean shed, um, again, just full of spare parts. Um, I think that's a 280 leg. Um, there's a heap of Volvo Penta 280 and 270 parts up there. Um, a heap of Mercruiser Alpha 1 leg parts down the bottom and just odds and sods and winches and boat winches. 
electric winches, PTO winches, another 280 leg, I think. I think this is the leg that I had running on that Hino, that five litre Hino engine, the small one. Okay, let's get back into some boats. So this is a 12 foot tinny, which as you can see, I use it almost every day. Kinda. Um, yeah, just, oh, forgot about that. It's what I call a little bathtub boat. This yellow thing. Um, which that one's actually, oh, that little bathtub boat's handy for when I go camping because it fits on the back of the car, nice and neat. I have a little electric that goes onto it and just for lakes and slow moving river streams it's fine. Basically just more junk. There's another diesel engine in here which I believe was a good worker, may not be by now, but uh, yeah. And just more junk of one thing or another in there. Big Eeper chain. Another boat. Uh, this was on the side of the road with a sign on it that said free. I thought that's the correct price. So I grabbed it with the intention of... I have a, a good Alpha 1 leg. I was going to put an outdrive on it. And I'm just waiting for a decent motor to put into it. To uh, couple up to that. Um, outboards. We have some more outboards here. They're all pretty much the same, the same motor, and, oh, pretty much the same motor and uh, leg configuration, just different year models. <coughs> so the Johnson GT20 is the same as the Evinrude 18 horsepower. Just FYI, the difference between the 18 and the 25s is the carburetor. Exactly the same motor. That's the only difference. Um, this one at the end here, that's a... God, when they stop making these? 60s? 70s? So that one's revivable and I would really like to do that. If for no other reason than nostalgia. My wonderful yacht. Um, this was a good boat. Hard to move it because there's pretty much nothing left of the trailer. I kind of suspect when I go to pull this out that most of the trailer is going to stay behind and I will possibly do damage to the boat when that happens. Um, all that C-section material that I have is earmarked for making a new trailer for this. Uh, last time I used this, we had an incident and I had to get towed back. So here's the, uh, the rudder, and as you can see, That broke, which kind of left me dead in the water. So I need to make two new ones of these. Both of those are fairly fatigued. And they need to be replaced. Uh, and that's the only, well, not the only, that's the main reason why this is uh, parked up. The engine in it, it's got an inboard auxiliary. Um, the book actually says, best engine in the world. That's not true. So just beside the yacht is my pile of scrap aluminium parts and stainless, whatever bits of stainless I have, I throw in, in this pile here. Um, which I do rat through and get bibs and bobs out of whoops, from time to time. Uh, this is the 70 horsepower that came with that, uh, that red boat, which worked. Uh, oh, I didn't get very long out of it. Kind of died pretty quick. Uh, in the shed here, the original three-phase generator that I bought, um, made of chinesium, worst generator you could ever imagine. Absolutely screams. It was in a silenced box, and the way that works is because um, they've got so much stuff on it, trying to keep it quiet, it can't breathe and it overheats, and that's how it came brand new. Heap of old lawnmowers and bits of pipe and other bibs and bobs. Should probably point out, spare tractor tyre for the um, that Nuffield. Spare compressor, no motor. Um, yeah, that was a homemade thing, which I, I think I bought, bought it for 10 bucks. 
um, and I've used the motor on something else, I can't remember what. This is the old framework of that uh, uh, diesel engine I did a will it start on, a little Ford diesel engine with a water pump on it. Um, so on the track there is the water pump that came off it and the engine is down the front in amongst that pile. Um, <clears throat> which I guess brings us now to this Case 1150. So the loader that I, I've just purchased, the wheel loader, um, <laughs> I actually found that and I wanted it. Um, and I needed the truck from work to go and pick it up. So I mentioned it to the boss uh, in an effort to, you know, preempt him for me asking to borrow his truck. Um, and he cut me off and said, thanks for pointing that out for me, Pete. Here's the money. Go get it for me. Bugger. So anyway, um, the boss bought it. We had to go get it. Um, but I still needed a decent sized machine for doing some heavy lifting around here. So this one I bought, I think, 1100 bucks. I paid for this. There's probably $1,500 or $2,000 worth of scrap steel in it. Um, so I didn't lose, but it's not quite the win I was hoping for. Um, having looked at it since, I think this is a bit beyond it. It's got a, the motor's got a spun bearing in it, and they pulled it apart and lost interest. Uh, the hydraulic cylinders, I think, are beyond repair. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't had a good look at them yet. Um, but my current thinking at the moment is yeah I'm just gonna strip it down for spare parts these loader arms there's some good quality steel in that which I dare say I will use to widen those forks to go on that other machine um, yeah and the rest of its scrap steel well yeah steel I can use elsewhere so coming down the side of the shed I have a pile here of steel odds and sods on both sides of the fence um, just handy bits of offcuts of stuff for manufacturing one thing or another um, we walk through this minefield um, uh, we come out the back to the lovely generator uh, and beyond the generator is something which I really need to be paying some good attention to lately is a three-phase industrial air conditioner which is now buried in underneath all that shrubbery which seems to be getting a bit out of hand but yeah anyway that's out the back of the shed and just for the sake of some pretty scenery that's the view out in the backyard so now coming into the shed, you're very familiar with this area, I'm sure. Um, I think the fuse has tripped. Uh, tire machine, that comes in handy. I uh, don't use it very often, which is why it's sort of getting overwhelmed with junk. Um, this is the old generator that I used to use. Uh, works fine, kind of. Uh, it's incredibly hard to start. You kind of need two batteries and everything in your favour. But it does go. Um, I think that's it's either a 30 or a 50 kVA alternator on the back of it. And I would like to put that on the back of that 353. Um, yeah, again, project for another day. Uh, that's the compressor that I normally use. Um, and that one's pretty good, actually. It's reasonably quiet and... Uh, kind of supplies enough air for what I do for most of what I do which is why I'm kind of tempted to just put up with this one and sell the other one because I'm going to get a lot more money for the other one than I would for this one um, that's the long range fuel tank for Markudla back when I was looking for forklifts and the like uh, this is a high lift electric forklift way down the back corner there um, yeah, it's, uh, it's got a, one of the wheels is seized up and there was something, oh, the batteries are pretty much gone. Um, they're not worth it. The cost of fixing it up is, ex would exceed the cost of what I would get for it if I sold it, uh, which is a bit of a shame because uh, the batteries do charge up. They just don't hold a charge very long. 
and the wheel or the wheels to buy the wheel is almost the same cost of what I'd get if I sold it so I don't know I might just pull the mast off and see if I can sell the mast by itself um, the battery pack as scrap steel I will get pretty much all my money back just from the uh, scrap steel value of the battery pack and the rest of it yeah scrap steel throw it in the bin so over the back there my lovely lathe I really like that machine that is a nice machine to use uh, same with my mill uh, lagoon or lagoon whatever you want to call it l-a-g-u-n um, good good machine um, yeah love these toys uh, got one welder down the back there there's another one there there's another one here there's another one here um, yeah I'm not sure of welders I think I've got two more under the bench um, right down in that back corner is nothing but just junk um, just little odds and ends from the boat little chantry pieces and stuff then onto this back hoe uh, I'm sure you are all very familiar with this machine um, still got a bit to do to it but um, yeah this will be the next project I think after I get that loader home just going to get the loader home park it up and then get back onto this and almost forgot to point out the other backhoe this is a 580e which is my uh, daily move around this thing's good for lifting I think about 2.2 ton so quite a step up from the uh, from the tractor um, but still not enough just coming back to our lithium batteries here for a second um, so the charger I, the charger they say is good for either 12 or 24 volt input um, so I connected up my one of my 24 volt panels which goes up to 36 volts uh, that charger incidentally only goes up to 30 volts so as soon as you connect it it trips out goes into fault mode won't start charging so I found another 12 volt solar panel but I'm pretty sure that panel's buggered because it's not putting anything into them now I knew I had a couple of other panels somewhere and for the life of me I've really spent about an hour or two searching everywhere to try and find them and in just filming this and coming in here and showing you all the junk I'm storing in here there they are so that's nice last couple of things I suppose uh, this is the mud bucket that came with the 580e and that is the loader bucket that came with that same machine um, that mud bucket is pretty much no good um, but the ears for the mount are probably still usable for something uh, and the loader bucket again it's all rusted out at the bottom but that's fixable and cut that out and weld a new piece in um, this ready looking thing is a long range fuel tank which I would like to put in the Susie at some point that will fit up under the tray between the chassis quite neatly um, so yeah another job to be done there and just another IBC pod which actually comes from inside there where I do all my uh, what do you call it biodiesel for reasons I'm not sure about we seem to have a couple of these guys flying around lately Another one of the toys is this uh, this is the original lathe that I used to have so uh, again my dad bought this uh, what 30 40 years ago for use up on the farm which we got quite a lot of use out of it up on the farm and I have got a mountain of use of it back down here as well um, moving over we have a lovely bandsaw um, again for years I've been trying to get hold of one of these and they're either just they either go as soon as they come online um, or they're just crazy expensive this one um, for some reason the guy couldn't get rid of it um, so much so that this what do you call that it's not a table saw radial arm saw he actually threw that in with it for free 
So I think it was about 80 bucks or something or 50 bucks or something for it. So yeah, super happy with that. And more electric motors and things for other projects that may or may not happen. Uh, <laughs> obviously I don't use it. Here's an elect, uh, a exercise bike. Um, and I got the, that's actually the motor out of a Fisher & Paykel smart drive washing machine. Um, which yeah, those things easily convert into a generator. So, you know, why not? Uh, that is the original bonnet of the Patrol. Uh, that big scoop in the middle of it. Uh, at one point I put a supercharger on the Patrol, on the TD42. Uh, and it was a little bit tall, so I had to make space in the bonnet for it. Um, the concept was great. Um, the execution, not so much. Um, the supercharger was just too small. Um, and I didn't have it set up properly. I should have had a butterfly valve on the intake of it, which I didn't do. So, you know, yeah. It didn't, it was, for some reason, it was just loud. Like, really, just a lot of really loud ambient noise from the car. Um, and it didn't perform all that well, again, because the blower was just too small. Also worth pointing out, uh, I later put a intercooler underneath that. I went back to the turbo and put an intercooler under that, under that scoop. So here we are, back down in the back shed. Uh, that's the intercooler that used to live underneath that scoop. And the brackets that went from... Uh, just on top of the radiator, down to the back of the uh, uh, back of the cabin, I suppose. So here is the little baby blower that I had on the patrol. Uh, tried to find the manifold. I can't find the intake manifold. Um, but basically, I just modified the manifold to uh, for this to mount directly onto it. A um, couple of reasons why it failed. One, this is too small. I think this is off a 3.6 litre engine. And it was going onto a 4.2. And the other thing, this used to have back here a throttle body, which I deleted and I shouldn't have. Uh, the more I look around me out, the more stuff I'm finding. <clears throat> so this is a factory built, I believe it's a Ruggerini or Lombardini. They're pretty much the same company. Uh, diesel outboard. Um, there's the leg off it there, comes with a four blade prop. There's no water pump on it, it is all air cooled. Um, the exhaust, I'm pretty sure that's upside down. I think it's supposed to be an exhaust stack and not point down into the water. Um, it has <laughs> an oil bath air filter, which isn't going to work when you tilt the outboard. It's electric start. And underneath the flywheel there, you can just see there's a pulley. And on the back, oh, I'm not sure if the light's going to show this, there is a mount there where an alternator is supposed to go. <coughs> so yeah, uh, the engine does work. Um, I haven't actually put it in water and fired it up to see uh, what sort of power it's got. I believe these are supposed to be about 25 horsepower. But yeah, anyway. Uh, also down in the depths there is a little diesel, I think it's a 3 kVA generator. Um, again, that works. And oh my god, is that thing loud. Absolutely screams. And I suppose in there you can kind of see there's a mower deck that's in reasonable condition. And that is earmarked to go on the Yanmar diesel lawnmower. I really need to stop saying, yeah, that's all of it, because I keep finding more and more stuff. So on the ground there, you can just see the framework, that yellow frame, and the mast over the back there, up against the barbecue, of a uh, little hydraulic engine lifter. Um, <clears throat> I did make a little modification on that, so that this crane, or so it sort of attaches to the back of the truck, um, as a crane, which came from necessity, uh, when I delivered that, uh, CBR 1000, that green motorbike I had when I delivered that down to Brisbane. This seemed to be the best and easiest way to load and unload. 
All right, I have to apologize here. I actually forgot to take my microphone into work and I tried recording this whilst or without the microphone and you couldn't hear a thing. So I'm gonna do a bit of a voiceover. So this is my Hanna Mag 44C loader. Uh, Hanna Mag or Massey Ferguson, same thing. Uh, you can see the engine's missing there. Fortunately, I've got a spare one here. Um, tires are reasonable. Um, the machine generally is, you know, in reasonably good nick. Uh, certainly usable for what I want. Four wheel drive, articulated. Um, <clears throat> I'm never gonna use this for digging a pile of dirt, so I don't need a huge motor in it. Uh, there's the cab, good seat, happy with the seat. Um, windscreen, not so much, that's just plastic, bit of perspex. Uh, I've got it supported by some steel, um, what do you call them, bits of C-section and the bucket chain back as well. Um, it's a fairly decent bucket, they've got an enormous great cutting edge that they've added to it. Um, same with the cheek plates on the side. Um, these ribs underneath, they could have been extended further forward but I'm never going to use the bucket like when I get it home one of the first things to happen is that bucket comes off and forks get put on in its place so to be honest I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with that bucket I probably don't want to sell it because you know it's part of the machine um, if I decide to one sell the machine one day and it doesn't have a bucket it's just going to make it so much harder a sale just coming back here to get a bit of a size perspective beside the truck and behind the Land Cruiser Here on the ground we have uh, all the other spares, so the bonnet, um, air filter bits, um, that's the wheel guard, radiator, uh, it's the hydraulic tank just on the left there, there we are. Um, muffler, probably won't use that again, heat exchanger, and filters and other bibs and bobs. Um, yeah, oh there's the front grille, I don't think it's supposed to have that bend in it, um, pretty sure it's not, I think it's a... Uh, a fault from transit somewhere. Uh, I've already got the radiator shroud sitting on the truck. Just a matter of uh, loading the rest of this stuff up. Okay, so that's the video for this episode. Um, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm recording inside because it's actually dark outside and, well, I'm scared of the dark. Uh, and it's pouring with rain outside too. Um, yeah, hopefully next week we can get stuck back into actually fixing some stuff and doing some things. Uh, we will see. Uh, there is uh, another cyclone that is forming off the coast. Um, the upside of this is I haven't actually unpacked anything that I packed away for the last one, so we might be fine. Um, don't have to really do anything. It does mean, however, a lot of rain. Uh, yay. Um, but we'll see. Uh, might just fizzle out. Might go south. Who knows what's going to happen. It's that far away. It's not really a concern for at least another week. But anyway, that's, uh, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll see you in the next episode. All right. See ya.